Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Press the Action Button Podcast. This is the long-awaited, long-promised video where we talk about the top 10 games of the decade. Games that came out between 2010 and 2019. And I have a list. He has a list. He doesn't know what's on mine. I don't know what's on his. But given our taste, there's might be some crossover because we have similar taste. Um... Um, some, just a few things before we begin. If you think a game should be on the list and it isn't, that means we just didn't like it as much as you or we didn't play it. Which means that you're an asshole and your choices suck. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> or if we did not, or if we put a game on the list and you don't think it deserves to be there, that means that we just liked it more than you. Right, yeah. That's it. Do you want to begin with your list or mine? Um, I mean, I guess we'll each do our number ten, right? Well, I don't even have mine in a specific order. I've just got them listed. Oh, man, I got an order. Yeah, I... I Go ahead. I had... I started off with 30 fucking games, and just getting it down to ten was hard enough. Well, let's just say that whatever you start with, that'll be your number ten. Okay, but keep in mind that these aren't in, necess- in any specific order. They're just, <laughs> just whichever one on your list you love the most, save that for number one. Okay, let me figure out what that is. Oh boy, that, that's a tough choice between two specific ones that immediately jump out at me. Life is strange. Is not on my fucking list. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> uh, two in one day would be. Hmm. Okay, I think I know which one I want to be my number one. Okay, right. so I, I'm going to start off with the second one on my list then, because the number one is literally the one at the top. All right. Fallout New Vegas. There we go. This came out what 2010, 2011. Yeah. Yeah. And. When it first launched, this was in an almost broken state, and I played it on PlayStation 3, but it's gotten a lot better since then, to the point where I can legitimately say this is one of the best games of uh, the that 10-year period. I love Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas to death, and... I could Obviously, I couldn't put 3 in because it came out in 2008, so New Vegas is it. There we go, yeah. New Vegas is fantastic. I mean, what a great game. Yes. Uh, there's so much player choice and player freedom. Yep. And great writing and good characters and atmosphere. And I love the uh, the the radio station with Mr. New Vegas. <laughs> what was it? Wayne Newton? I think. Was it? I don't remember who the DJ was. Oh, man. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to find out because that's going to drive me crazy. Yeah, it was Wayne Hold Newton. Vegas. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, okay. God, that's fantastic. I love Wayne Newton. Yeah, that that was awesome having him as the DJ. I don't like him quite as much as I like Three Dog and uh, Three, but I love both. Okay, so what's first up on your list? So my number 10, I guess that's where I'm going to go. Then I'm just going to start from 10 and go on to 1. Okay. Mine would be Hitman. The uh, the reboot one? Yeah, the reboot. I absolutely love that game and that series. And that reboot to me was, it was so excellent. I mean, it was everything I wanted out of a Hitman game. It, it, I'm just a massive, massive, massive fan of that franchise. I just remember playing that reboot. Just going fucking nuts for it. You know, you had these huge, expansive uh, levels and so many different ways to complete your object- objectives. It was just so great. Yeah. I have... The only one that I have played is... Uh, what's the second one? Blood Money? Yeah. 
Yeah, I played Blood Money on the PlayStation 2, and I remember liking that and thinking it was pretty cool, but that's my only experience with Hitman. Ever since playing the first one, I've just been a huge fan, so like this reboot, and then the second one's even better, honestly, but the re- I love the reboot so much, I had to put it on my list. Okay. Yeah, I have not played it, so I can't really speak to it. And uh, up next on my list, Skyrim. Nice. Obvious Two pick. Two of uh, Obvious <laughs> pick, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously Skyrim's going to be on the list. Yeah, I would not be surprised if it's on your list, too. Oh, well, it might. It might be on here. It wouldn't surprise me at all, because uh, we both just fucking fell in love with this game when it came out. Yeah. And can you blame us? The, the music from... Uh, what the fuck is the composer's name? It's going to drive me nuts. Hold on. Jeremy Soul, that's it. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy Soul's music is so atmospheric and beautiful, as it always is. I mean, he did Oblivion and Morrowind as well. He, interesting. He looks like a cross between Alex Lifeson of Rush and Trent Reznor. <laughs> yeah. He's got that level of talent. You know, the very first game he ever did, and this is a tangent, was a uh, Square on it, Squaresoft game for the uh, Super Nintendo. Called Secret of Evermore. Yeah, I remember that game. That game was awesome. Yeah. Wow, his... Jesus. He did Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, which also had a good soundtrack. Yes, it did. Wow, he has got a hell of a lineup here. Yeah, he's done a lot of games, and a lot of his work is very, very good. Oh, he did Morrowind. Nice. Yeah, I have called him... In the past, I have called him the... uh, North American Nobuo Uematsu, and I'm not sure I can give him a bigger compliment than that. Nope. No, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. uh, His music is wonderful. The art design and the world is just absolute joy to explore. And for the first time when you swing your fucking sword, it actually feels like it's got weight behind it. Where, like, don't get me wrong, Love Morrowind and Oblivion. The combat was kind of clunky and you didn't really feel like you had any weight behind your swings. You know what I mean? For sure, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. So the combat just flat out feels better than previous games. Skyrim's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's legendary. Yeah, it turns 10 this year. Yeah, insane. Okay, so what's next? You can probably play it on your microwave at the moment. What? So you can probably play it on your microwave. Yeah. So what's next on your list? My next one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some shit for this one. Uncharted 4. Oh, uh, I won't give you shit for that one because Uncharted 4 is goddamn awesome. I, I love that game. To me, it was the perfect culmination and the story. I'm... Anyone who knows me, I have a full sleeve of pirate tattoos, so the whole story, you know, tracking down the pirate kings, and, oh my god. Yeah, and, that and button. going to the, the fabled, uh, and might have existed in real life, pirate uh, anarchy city, I forget what it's called. So cool. Yeah, it's so cool. They, Go ahead. There's parts in the where there's like bigger sections, and you get to drive a jeep around and use like the winch. And it's just so well done, and I did not want those to end. I was having so much fun driving that Jeep around. And, like, they did this game so well that even that, like, driving that Jeep felt better than most games where you drive. It's yeah. Just, it was incredible. And, like, you could feel the weight of the Jeep and the way it would drive over the, the mud and the dirt. Oh, my God. And, you know, the story with um, uh, Nathan's brother being in it was fantastic. The way it starts, the way it ends is amazing. Just an absolute, from like start to finish, it's an absolute incredible game. Yeah, uh, it is a really, really good fucking game. I love Uncharted yeah. 4. Good story, 
good end of the series. You get to see Soli back. I, I the, the dynamic between Nate and Soli is just so perfect. Yeah, I know. It's so good. I don't remember Sully looking like Mark Wahlberg, but maybe I'm weird. Yeah. So everyone have fun with that shit show when it comes out. Yeah. So next on my list, and this one's almost a cursed pick at this point, but I couldn't leave it off despite its sequel. The Last of Us. What was that all about? Okay. Okay. I love the first The Last of Us, and I want to pretend that the sequel doesn't exist. Yeah. I understand why you put it on there. I, because I hate what's become of it so much that I couldn't do it. Yeah, I almost removed it from my list because of the sequel. I almost removed it from my list. I just... I fucking hate what they did to it, but I totally get why you put it on yours. It's not on mine. I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now. Yeah. But I understand. Yeah, I, I don't want to dive too deep into this because I'm going to fucking make myself depressed thinking about how bad the sequel is. But... <laughs> or we'll <get> platformed. <laughs> yeah. It's such a shame. Because the yeah. first one... I still have a poster of the first one on my wall. I loved that game. Yeah, I did too. I did too. And when I just take it as is and go, okay, we're going to pretend there's no sequel, I still do. I mean, that's what you have to do, right? Yeah. You know, you play that first one, like, the, the way it's done, like, the kind of the solitude you feel when you're playing it, you know, there's not a ton of combat, which is what I like, even more so than Uncharted, you know. Yeah, Uncharted's pretty combat-heavy in sex. This is... Uh, uh, try to stealth your way through it or you're going to die yeah personally i is my i love uncharted i wish i almost wish it was more like that in a sense to where they scaled back the action because i love those exploring moments so much but mm -hmm. yeah last of us was fantastic. okay so what's next on your list next on my list is the witcher 3 I need to play this. I really do. I've heard so many good things yeah. about it. If you... Oh man, it is like... It's Skyrim-esque in a way that you can just put the game on, go in a direction, and all kinds of shit is going to happen to where that you had no idea. You know, you might put it on to do one thing, and then five hours later, you're like, what the fuck am I... You know, yeah, riding around on my horse and like the combat, the story, the side missions, the world, main characters, everything about that game I love so much. Like these, even the side missions in that game are they're almost like full games. Like it's crazy. Yeah, that's what I have heard. Combat. It's crazy just how much content yeah. there is in it. Yeah, combat is excellent. Graphics are great. You know the the level design the different towns and the cities and there's one like you go to and it's kind of there was a war and so like you go the lands are all fucked up and like you see like the remnants of the battle and like these huge fields and, and like you're walking through them and it's just so well done like you really get a sense for it and then you know you go into a pub and <laughs> the way you know, Geralt interacts with people is fantastic and all the, all the shit that you can get with your armor and the weapons like I just think, I think it's a masterpiece. I really do. That's what I keep hearing, and I, again, haven't played it. Can't speak for you it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's something that I've been want meeting to play and just never gotten around to. And what's funny is I I played The Witcher two a little bit, and I liked it, but I don't. Like, I don't know, I could play this one over and over or still just hop back into it. I don't really have a desire to play Witcher 1 and 2 ever again. You know, no offense to those games or people who love those, but I just love 3 so much. Yeah. So, my next one is a bit of a curveball. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, nice. Okay. Have you played Blood Dragon? No. Oh. I've, seen, I've watched game. How, dude... You, you love the a you love like 80s 
cartoons and movies and shit, and you love I, Far Cry. How have you not played this game? I thought you haven't played The Witcher 3. Don't give me shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, th th this is the kind of thing that was made for people like you. Like, uh, Brutal Legend, it was made for people like you and me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I 100% know that I have to sit down and play it. But it's just one of those things that, like, any time I ever think about it, it's like right now, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I do need to play that. And then I'll go fuck off and do something else and forget about it. But I, I know it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, it, the good news is it's getting uh, apparently getting remastered and re released with Far Cry uh, 6, which is awesome. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, that they had a little thing that includes Far Cry Blood Dragon or something when they did mm -hmm. the, the announcement for the. The play is the villains DLC at E3. But yeah, Blood Dragon, it's a short, you'll probably get eight to ten hours out of it, and that's it. But yeah. those eight to ten hours are so packed with references and great humor. And read the item, every single item description, every single fake movie everything it's all very very funny and yeah I'll, I'll definitely i'm definitely gonna play it and the dialogue is so fucking stupid in the best way possible i love blood dragon <laughs> okay so what's next on yours next on mine would be where was i at which are three grand theft auto five I have played a. I own GTA Five for the Xbox One. I haven't dug too deep into it. I like what I played. I, I played it. So, because it came out on the 360, right? Yeah. I played it on the 360, beat it a hundred percent, bought it again, played it on the Xbox One, beat it a hundred percent. Like I absolutely love that. I love Grand Theft Auto. It's coming to Since the PlayStation the 5. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I've and probably the Xbox getting, One X. I believe so. I just, like, man, I love the world, I love the story, and it's Grand Theft Auto, so just, like, that's one of those games that I can put on, and I can play it for five minutes and rack up a wanted level, or I can play it for five hours. Just run around 15 and, fuck, hours and just, fuck around and kill people. Yeah, just totally lose myself into it. Like the world is so fantastic, and it, like I, I, I mean, I will say I wish the that it was bigger. I think it could have been, yeah. but it's so well done. The the characters swapping back and forth is great. Um, man, I just it's Grand Theft Auto. You know, I love it. Yeah, I know I, I like what the like Auto. played of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so well done. Like. All the side activities in it are really, really fun. I mean, I Jesus, I even turn it... I still, to this day, no shit, I will turn that game on and go play golf. Because the golfing mechanic in that game is so fucking fun. Yeah. I That is in my two-play pile, along with five billion other games, and I'm currently playing oh, Mass Effect 2, so... Yeah, my back catalog is unreal. At least it's the Legendary Edition, so it's a newer version that isn't the original. Yeah. I played it originally on the uh, PlayStation 3, and don't play Mass Effect 2 on the PlayStation 3. It runs like trash. I love the... Well, luckily for you... Go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. I was going to want to play Grand Theft Auto 5. Since Grand Theft Auto 6 apparently is not being released till 2025, you got plenty of time. Yeah, <laughs> got plenty of time. Okay, so next yeah. on my list, and this is something that I keep telling you to play, Alien Isolation. Oh, I downloaded it. I haven't played it yet. I downloaded it. If you like survival horror and you like xenomorphs, you'll like Alien Isolation. Okay, yeah, I'm going to play it. It, Because it, that's what it is. It, you can, like, you'll be sneaking around trying to make as little noise as possible because you will hear the xenomorph crawling around in the vents above your head. And you know that if he jumps down, you're probably fucking dead because you can't kill yeah. him. And it is so fucking intense. I love this game. 
There's also a DLC I... that lets you play through the first movie. No shit. Isn't that awesome? Oh man. I just the other day, because it's on Games Pass, I downloaded it to my console, so I I am absolutely going to play it soon. Yes. I've been recommending this one to you for a while. Uh, it takes a little while to get going. Like, the Xenomorph doesn't pop in until a couple of hours in, so... It, it takes while, a while to build up and build atmosphere and the setting and and the set up the story and things like that. It's n uh, not the fastest paced game in the world. I will say that, but I love it so much. I it doesn't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's you know those types of games are getting rare now, and so it's to sit and play one it's so fun like i'm excited i'm excited to play it for sure yeah i think you'll like it when you do okay what's next on your list this is falling apart. next on mine is uh, this is gonna blow your mind so get ready skyrim i'm not surprised i, I figured it would probably be on your list and i don't blame you because it's an yeah. amazing game probably put a solid 10,000 hours in that damn game. <laughs> yeah, when I went through and recorded gameplay of all of these games to prepare for this podcast, because I'm going to have gameplay of all of them in the background, right? Yes. While, while we're discussing them, I got lost and wound up playing Skyrim for like three straight hours. It's so good. You can still, I mean, as much as we make fun of Skyrim, like how it's released on everything literally everything it's still you can still just pop right in and play it and get lost in it for that, hours yeah and those first moments when you first do like the foos and all that shit looks like, so fucking good yeah first time a dragon is up and you lose your shit yeah the first time the first time you that happens it's intense by the time it happened for like the 60th time you're like I have shit to do. Can you just leave oh, me the man. fuck alone? <laughs> like you're in a and you're trying to speak to different people, you want to sell stuff, you want to buy some stuff. Here comes a fucking dragon every time. Every time. Yeah. And then like you're fighting the dragon, you accidentally hit one of the guards and then they get all pissed off. <laughs> you have committed a crime against Skyrim and her people. Yeah, God damn it! I still love it so much. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I uh, I love playing the Argonians because there's a lot of water in that game, and they can breathe underwater. So you could just stay down as long as you fucking want. Anytime yeah. you're running from the guards, you can just hop into a lake and just kind of sit there on the bottom until they fuck off and leave you alone. <laughs> I remember my character. I, he was he was basically Thor without being named Thor because I figured you know it was kind of a Norse kind of game you know in the yeah. cold yeah and then I remember getting the ring where you could turn into the werewolf whenever you wanted and I thought like I would go into go into town and turn into a werewolf I thought that was the coolest thing in the world yeah it's fucking awesome okay so uh, Wolfenstein the New Order this game surprised me with how good it was like. Uh, I wasn't expecting a new Wolfenstein game to come out and be just fucking phenomenal. But that's what happened. It, Wolfenstein The New Order came out was at the very end of the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and very beginning of the PlayStation 4 era. Yeah. And... Was that the one? I'm sorry, go ahead. And it, it was just a... It was a combination of modern... More modern style of uh, shooting games with... Uh, mixed in with old school as well because like you can dual wield like like a shot yeah. like a machine gun in one hand and like a sniper rifle in the other it makes no sense but who cares yeah was was that the one like at the beginning wasn't there like a level you're kind of in a trench and there's like these almost mechanical dogs that you're fighting yep that's it all right you're gonna hate me so be prepared I bought that game and I played that and those dogs kept I played it for like a day and those dogs kept killing me and I got so fucking pissed off I turned the game off and I've never put it back on Shame. like uh, I've heard that the sequels aren't nearly as good which is a shame because uh, 
The New Order is a very, very good game. I need to play The Old Blood, which is uh, the prequel to it, set in Nazi Germany with, like, Nazi yeah. uh, zombies in it, which, if you don't know the original Wolfenstein 3D from back in the DOS days in, like, 1991, oh, yeah. had Nazi zombies in it. Oh, you remember the final boss, right? Yeah, Hitler, Mecha Hitler. <laughs> yeah. That was Mecha so Hitler. cool. Yeah. I need to actually play it. Like I said, I I got so mad at that game, I turned it off and I never put it back on. Yeah. Shame, because it, there's a lot of good stuff. There's lo surprisingly good storytelling. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect yeah, the story to be good. Right. Right, it's Wolfenstein. Yeah. Okay, so what's next on your list? Uh, next on mine is Far Cry 3. Just regular Far Cry 3. I had a tough time just choosing between this and Blood Dragon. Yep. I thought that game was a revolution, revelation, I guess, to me when it came out. Just how expansive, like, all the shit that you could do. And, man, I love that game. Love that game. Yeah. I like I said, I had a tough time choosing between this and uh, Blood Dragon because they were both on my list of thirty games that I started with. Mm -hmm. yep. So I all um, this was you. almost yep. another one where we one hundred percent agreed. Yeah, it's just, it's man, I don't even know what all you could say about it. It's just it's so great. You know, I there are so many of those. You know when you think about, like, those gaming moments where, like, something just fucking crazy happens and you, like, look around, like, was somebody here to witness this? Like, that's that game. Like, and it just never ends. Yeah. Yeah, believe me, I get it. I almost put it on my list. I get it. Yeah. Far Cry 3 is awesome. I love it so yes, it is. And Blood Dragon plays, exa plays almost exactly like Far Cry 3. The difference is awesome. you can get a sniper rifle that shoots explosive rounds and blows up everything near it, so you don't even need to aim down sights <laughs> with it. <laughs> you can Perfect. use your sniper rifle like a shotgun at that point. <laughs> and unfortunately, there hasn't been a Far Cry game as good as that since. So. Yeah, that, which is not a not like 4 is a good game. I like 4. It's a good game. Yeah, it's just it's not 3. Yeah. Uh, up next on mine, and here's another one we agree on. Uncharted 4 is next on my list. Yeah, nice. Nice. The story, the music, the setting, the art design, the characters. Oh, man, I do music. God. Uncharted, the Uncharted scores are just fucking awesome. Yeah, it really is. Like, they've always been good. Dating back to the first one in 2007, they've always been good. Yep. You know, I so whenever anyone asks me what my favorite like classic trilogy of movies is, I always say Indiana Jones. Like that's my favorite. And for this, like it's like a modern Indiana Jones. So much you even have like a journal you get to look in, which I don't know why. I thought the journal was so awesome. I just like I remember hitting that weird button on the you know the Dual Sense controller and just bringing the journal up all the time when I didn't even need to and flipping through it. Yeah. Yeah, the journal was cool. Uh, it really does feel like uh, Indiana Jones. I remember when it first oh, came man. out, everybody compared it to uh, Tomb Raider. Yeah, you know, I like it better. Yeah, the funny thing about Tomb Raider is that um, Tomb Raider, the reboot, wound up taking major inspiration from Uncharted. Yeah, the, the the Tomb Raider reboot literally came insanely close to making my list. It was either that or Hitman, honestly. Yeah, I, I again, don't blame me there, because the Tomb Raider reboot's fucking awesome. Sure is. Yes, it is. It, that, uh... But yeah, I remember people used to always call it Uncharted Dude Raider. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. When the first one came out, and everybody was like, oh, it's just dude raider it, there's the well one I, I just i liked it better i love nathan drake as a character i'm still so bummed that they like 
just kind of finished up the story with Nathan. Like, I would have loved more games. Yeah, so would I. But and then they did the side one with what's her name. That doesn't exist in my mind. <laughs> I don't blame you. There's a level in that game where you are young Drake. You remember you're going to that old ass mansion. Yeah, I remember. Like the way the the way the lights coming through the windows and shining on these like bookcases. I like man, it just like puts you right there. It's so well done. Yeah, that fucking oh my God, blew that my mind. Good. I remember that. Yeah, it's so fun. It's so so good. Yeah, Uncharted Four is fucking phenomenal. Okay, so what's next on your it list? Really is. Uh, <laughs> New Vegas. Oh, so th- there's more crossover. New, I again, yep. I don't blame you. New Vegas made my list. It's awesome. I told you yep. we'd have some crossover because uh, yeah, we have similar mm. taste. I know there's going to be one. I'm I'm pretty positive there's going to be one more game on our list. It's crossover at least, mo- pretty much one more, but. Yeah, I don't know what more we can say about New Vegas other than it's just, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it it, uh, it takes a lot of ideas from a game that was in, a fault, the, the original Fault 3 was in development that was uh, uh, was being developed under the title Van Buren. Yeah. And it takes a lot of uh, story beats that were going to be put into Van Buren and runs with mm-hmm. them. Just a f- absolutely fantastic game. Just, I mean, I said it just kills it. It's so good. Yeah. If you haven't played it, then you need to. Yeah, highly re- like pick that up for your Xbox One X or whatever, and play it or or get it on Steam. But you're in the middle of the summer sale. It's probably on sale anyway. Well, right now, you know what? Because Bethesda's on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, I want to say you can get New Vegas. In fact, I might just download the damn thing. Yeah, I've I've still got the physical disc, so I don't really need to do that. But yeah, hi, if you've never played it before, yeah. highly recommend that and three. Those game, both of those yeah, games are is, fucking masterpieces. I believe three is on Games Pass too. Should be. Uh, yeah. Doom twenty sixteen. If you know me, you, you knew go. this was going to be on my list. Yeah, and I, once again, you're going to hate me, but I haven't played it yet. Uh, yeah, I keep telling, this is another one that I keep telling you that you need to play. I know, I know. Doom 2016, it brought, like, don't get me wrong about Doom 3. I love Doom 3. But Doom 2016 brought back that speed and aggressive nature that the original games had, and I love it to death for it. They made some very uh, wise choices to largely differ from uh, previ- from uh, the modern style of play for, vi- for first-person shooters. Like, you don't take fall damage in Doom 2016. The only way to die from a fall is if you fall into a bottomless pit. Right. Which is awesome. And you don't have to reload your weapons ever in Doom 2016. And there's no two weapon limit, you know? That's great. No two weapon limit, no two weapons in a sidearm. And your character moves faster than pretty much anybody else in the FPS genre, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. I played so much Doom back in the day. I really need to play the new one because I want to play the newest one, yeah, Eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Doom Eternal was a little too new to make this list. That's what, 2020? Yeah. So just slightly too new to be on this list. Yeah. Considered for it. Uh, but uh, Doom 2016 is fucking phenomenal and highly, nice. highly recommended. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, what's next on yours? Next on mine is Breath of the Wild. I need to play this goddamn game. I everybody and their mother has told me how good it is, and I finally have a Switch, and I don't own it. But hey, I beat the uh, me, the remake of uh, Link's Awakening, and love that. Uh, yeah, it's a great game. To me, Breath of the Wild is it's just it's a Legend of Zelda perfected. I just can't think of anything better. Like I, I struggled putting Breath of the Wild at number one because I think. Breath of the Wild is a 10 out of 10. I just, like... There's... 
so much in that game to even talk about that it's like almost overwhelming just to try and describe it. I'll just say that if you love Legend of Zelda, it does not get better. It's it's everything you could want. I the amount of shit <laughs> that Nintendo managed to put in this game is fucking mind blowing without it being overwhelming. I mean, it's just it's absolutely insane how much is in this game and just how fun it is. Yeah. I need to play it. I want to play it so bad. Yeah. I have a Switch now, so I should be able to play it at some point. I just haven't done it yet. I mean, yeah, there's there's one there's one decision in the game that I don't like, and it's weapon break. Yeah, that is the one thing that I'm like, Ugh. every time. But if you get the if you get the Master Sword in the game, which is not easy to do, they make <laughs> make sure it's not easy to get the Master Sword. It doesn't break, it just kind of runs out of power, so to speak, so you have to let it charge back up. But it's it's an absolute masterpiece of a video game. Like, you, you really can't get better. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Resident Evil 7 is next on my list. And this is the most recent nice. one that I played. This is the most recent one All on my right, list yeah. that I played. Resident Evil 7. And this was a breath of... Have you played 7? I have not beat it, but I've played it. This was the breath of fresh air that the series badly needed. Like, first off, it's the first true... true horror game since, like, 4, right? Yeah, there's part of... And I... I before anyone crucifies me, the beginning of six when you play, you're you're playing as Leon, and you're like a, what like a college campus. Yeah, to me that felt pretty traditional Resident Evil, but it's not that long. Yeah, yeah, but uh, seven is uh, survival horror from beginning to end, and it feels yeah. like a throwback to one, two, and the designs of one, two, and three. I mean, you're going to this remote, creepy mansion where you get surrounded by enemies and you're limited ammo when you can't kill them all. There's a big thing, big emphasis on puzzle solving, and all of this is how one, two, and three played. You know? Yeah. Yep. So it feels like a throwback to those, but it also feels like a breath of fresh air because you're doing it all from the first person perspective. Yeah, that's I've I've gone back and forth on that so much that sometimes I wish that it wasn't first person, but then sometimes I like it. Yeah, I just I instantly fell in love with this game and found it hard to yeah. put it down. And then some of the DLC for it's fucking awesome. Like you get uh, the End of Zoe DLC where you play as uh, uh, Jack Baker's brother Joe, who just punches the shit out of the molded enemies, and it's fucking great. <laughs> uh, highly, highly recommend if you like survival horror. You will probably like this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you like Resident Evil, I, I can't imagine not playing it if you're a fan. The, the only the only problem I had with it was, uh, Chris showed up at the end and he looks nothing like Chris. Have you seen? Well, yeah. What? Yeah, I have, and he doesn't. And then, whatever is that? They have like a movie or like a. CG movie or something coming out and Leon's the star and he doesn't look like Leon which kind of drives me insane yeah Leon's my favorite character so like yeah fucking love it's, it's, it's hard it's hard for me to play a Resident Evil game if he's not in it and like get super into it because I just want Leon back but yeah that sounded very gay but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? it did I want my Leon back so I'm but yeah no I mean that one's great. Go ahead. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that our number ones might be the exact same thing. I don't think they are because we still have, we still, have, we still each have two, right? Or do I have two more? Uh, you I have, have two, two more. more. I've got this, my number one. You've got one. Okay. So I think I know what your number one is. And I think it's my number two, which also sounds hilarious. Okay. But my number two, back to, yeah, that's my number one. <laughs> Okay, yeah. 
Mass Effect 2 just uh, this is like a perfect RPG. Yep. Like it, people bitch about oh you spend a lot of time mining planks. Bitch, that's relaxing. The fuck are you talking about? Oh god. Oh yeah, it's so fun. I can do that in that game for fucking hours. I that like I love I love like space sci-fi, you know, like good story. That game, you know, you read a really good book or you're watching a movie, you just don't want it to end because yeah. it's so good. That's that game. Like I was so and he, he like I was so crazy about that game that any of the, you know, the areas that you would go to, I would walk as slow as possible. Yeah. Just to get more time for the game. Yeah, I love this game to death and I didn't think they could top Mass Effect 1 because of how good that game was. And they found a way. Yeah, I know I know there's a small group who prefer one. I don't I don't understand why. I thought two was that's one of the I think it's one of the best games ever made. Yeah, I would say that about both of them, but uh two is the better one. Yeah, it's oh man, it's it's just <sighs> I don't even have the right words for how much I love that fucking game. I played it. I mean, the the amount of hours I spent just walking around the Normandy and just checking in on people. <laughs> yeah. Just talking to your crew. Oh, man. It's like trying to pick what crew you want to take with you every time. Like, I mean, Garrus went with me every time. but Yeah, Gar- Garrus is space bro. Fuck, fucking love Garrus. Dude's awesome. At it. Yep. But, but, but all of the characters were great. Like... Uh, Jacob Taylor is a good guy, career soldier. Miranda, you don't see trust her at first, but you yeah. grow to like her over the course of the game. Jack is a complete badass. You know? When I My crew in that game was pretty much Garrison, Jacob, or I would take Thane. Yeah, Thane's a badass, too. Like, that fucking, fucking love Thane, just... I was so happy that he got a final badass moment in three. Yeah. And what's the the Krogan? What's his name? Uh, Grunt. Grunt. Yeah. Oh my god, he's so cool. The tank born. Yeah. Kro- he's awesome. He's yeah. uh, Morden Solus yep. too. The Solarian. Oh. Just dude, that game is just fucking next level. Great. It's so it's so amazing. Yeah, every character is wonderful. The story is amazing. Every single fucking mission is awesome. The combat is significantly better than it was in one. Yeah, it is. It's it's so so much better. And also, you don't have the uh, what was the Mako moments, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love and hate the Mako at the same time because uh, the, <laughs> the landing on a foreign planet. In your big ass vehicle and exploring it is such a cool fucking concept. But the Mako yep. bounced around like a goddamn ping pong ball. Oh man, it was a pain. Yeah. So it's like I have a love hate relationship with it. I love doing it and I hate doing it at the same time. Yeah. No, I get you. Honestly, my favorite thing about that game might just be the world design, you know, going to the different worlds and seeing the different cities and the creatures. I, I just couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. I was. It's one of the rare games that I actually bought, like, the collector's editions for. Yeah, I didn't... I... Had, that was... That was... Uh, came out after I had my uh, Xbox 360 and a whole shitload of other stuff stolen from me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you remember that. I told you yeah. about it. Uh, so I didn't get to play it right away. I didn't play it till it came out on the PlayStation 3. I loved it on the PlayStation 3, but I'll tell you this. It ran like trash on that system. Yeah, I know. I played it on the Xbox. Uh, hey, it did come with most of the DLC for it, so I got to play uh, yeah. Lair of the Shadow Broker, which is just Fucking phenomenal great, DLC. That great DLC. And Project Overlord. I had like, all... That poor man yep. at the end of Project Overlord. I felt so bad for him. 
I played all the DLC. In fact, I, after playing, the, I remember I played through all the DLC and then I went and restarted and played through the whole game again because I loved it, loved it so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's my number one. That's my number one of the that decade is Mass Effect 2. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's a, you can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't cannot go wrong with ME2. It's a, it's a fucking masterpiece. It might be the best game that uh, BioWare's ever made. Might be. That definitely is because yeah. like Kotor is just fucking phenomenal too. I put it above Kotor. It's a tall statement. I, th- I, th- I put. Yeah, I put it above Kotor. But just because, like, you got, you got this giant sprawling sci-fi epic that didn't have to be Star Wars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It. And it was. Honestly, it was kind of like a very gritty Star Trek in a way. Like it was just so fucking good. Yeah, I loved it to death. Okay, so what's your number one? My number one is Red Dead Two. Listen to me. I need to play. To I haven't anybody. played either. I guess there are three Red Dead games, aren't there? Uh, kind of, yeah. There's Red Dead Revolver, then Red Dead Re- uh, Redemption. Red Dead. Yeah. Red Dead 2, I think it might be my all-time favorite game. Just since I've been a little kid, I've loved Westerns. I still love Westerns. Like, I'm totally obsessed with them. And it's it's like a Western RPG. And, I mean, every tiny speck of detail has been put into this fucking game yeah you can you can turn it on and you can play it for five minutes i I know i said this before about other ones or you can sit and play it for days on end and you can do the most mundane shit i spent one day i shit you not i turned that game on and i spent hours just going fishing in a pond and camping and making coffee and then the next day i was having gunfights and robbing trains and <laughs> going into town like but that comes to it got everything that I wanted yeah and like the it's like the perfect western game but also it's you know it's not just it's not Grand Theft Auto Western in a way I mean it is but it isn't it's it's so serious and so well done like yeah you have your goofy shit and your comedy but exploring that world and all the creepy shit you can find all the funny shit the easter eggs I don't I can't think of another game that I've played in many, many years to where I just, like, I was so overwhelmed with how much I loved it. You know, like, even now, just thinking about it, all I want to do is put that game on, hop on my horse, and, like, I like I said, I love Westerns, so to me, it was like being in a movie. I just, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, this, you just remind me of this meme, here, I'll send it to you, that I posted up on my Twitter Shortly before we uh, uh, started recording, you're probably gonna fucking love this. I just message it to you. Yeah, go. My only, my only gripe is I wish there would have been story DLC for it. Yeah. And I, I've read people that have put it on, and the intro. It the it takes a while. I mean, this game is friggin' enormous, so it takes a while to get going. But I thought the intro was so cool. You're up in the mountains and it's it's cold and you're going through the snow, but it's it's so well done that and I've seen people say that they they couldn't make it past the intro. I don't. I just don't understand why. Yeah, did you get that uh, the message I just sent you? Uh, not yet. Strange. Listen to me. When the time comes. I'm sure I'll come in here in a minute. Hey, let, let me text the, message it to you. Go ahead. This is over. Oh, the, wait. No, wait. That's the... It's just a link. Red Sox are winning. Rangers are winning. They're up 3-1 to one in the bottom of the sixth. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm wanting Boston to climb back in the first place, and they're close, but... Yeah, I, I'm wanting the Rangers to just... Please don't be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess just getting back on Red Dead again, man, the ga- the guns, the... I mean, even every tiny detail, even so much as, like, you know, pulling your rifle off 
off the holster on the horse, or, or you know, if you, if you don't do that, he puts it on his back. Like I know it sounds stupid, but it's like every little fucking detail in that game they they did. Yeah. We got lawmen in three different states after us. They chased us from the west. They chased us over the mountains. So yeah, if. Uh, if you like westerns in any way, there I, I text messaged it. Text messaged it to you. Civilized. See if it worked that time. You're the only one of these fools. Yeah, here it is, Hall. Yeah, I figured you like yep. that. Use a yep. dead eye to shoot yeah. the same guy in the dick twelve times. Right. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> anyway there was one I, I remember go ahead i was playing the game and i was i was walking because like you know people talk shit to you when you're walking around the game so i was walking by the saloon this guy was standing up on the steps and he was talking shit to me in the game and i was carrying a coach gun which is a double barrel side by side and i turned around and shot him in the dick and he like fucking backflipped off of the saloon stair and landed on his head <laughs> man i laughed so yeah, I would have left my ass off of that shit too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so fun. The, the gunplay in that game is so fun. Trust me. Yeah. I think that's everything. Yeah. And uh, the next time we talk to you guys, it won't be on this channel. It will be on the Bit Shoot exclusive movie review channel when we are talking about. Predator. I hope you guys are looking forward to that because I fucking am because Predator's goddamn awesome. Yes. So I will leave a make sure I leave a link in the description below. Uh, let us know your top ten games of uh, the decade below, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. See you.